Hey, how you guys doing today? Um, here showing you how to replace, well actually how to do a coilover conversion on a W220. Uh, this customer had bought the strut masters kit which comes with the four struts for uh, the front and back. So I will, be re I will be removing the stock ABC shocks, the active body control, the hydraulic shocks, and installing the uh, new coilover suspension because they were having issues with this suspension. Um, I do have a video showing how to replace the rears because um, I did, uh, like I said, I did everything on this car. So uh, please be on the lookout for that video as well. I'll leave a link in the description below as well as uh, a box to click on. But uh, the fronts are actually much easier than the rears. Um, you won't, you shouldn't need any special tools. Um, a flare wrench, 11 millimeter flare wrench, which will be used for uh, bleeding off the pressure that's built up in the uh, hydraulic line. Uh, you could get away with an adjustable wrench, but that's probably the only tool you'll need. Oh, and a five millimeter, a uh, five millimeter uh, Allen head socket. That's what you'll use to loosen the set screws that are in the bottom of the shocks. Um, so yeah, as I said, I will be working on installing this here. Uh, I've already done the front left side. That's that's the that's the that's the old one right there. And then uh, I'm gonna be in. This is what this is what's going in. Just a traditional shock and spring combination. Um, I'm also doing a few control arms and whatnot, but. First, obviously, you'll need to do is jack up the car, get it on the jack stands. As you can see, I have it up in the air already. Um, you will have to remove these plastic covers. I didn't film that, I'm sorry, but they're pretty easy to take off. You want to take off this one first. Uh, it's held on by, uh, there. you can see the holes, one here, one here, one hole back there, and another hole right there. They are 13 millimeter uh, bolts that hold that on then that shield will just fall down. And then after you remove that one, you can take off this large valance here. Um, this one is held on by, I think about eight or nine, uh, eight millimeter screws. Uh, you can see I have the screws right there. Um, those right there, that's the screws that hold it on. But um, yeah, you can go on ahead and remove this deal. Uh, like I said, it, it's held on by a few screws, one here, one here. There, I think one there and one on the side. You'll, you'll see them. They're pretty, pretty easy to spot, uh, but they are eight millimeter. So once you remove all of those, you can pull that shield out as well. That way you'll have all the bottom of the car exposed because really the only thing you need to get at is the bleeder valve, but it's helpful to have some room to see what you're looking at. Um, I do apologize for the wind. I probably say that a lot in my videos, but it tends to be really windy where I'm at. I don't know why, but it does. So, um, so the first thing you want to do after you get the covers off is to locate the bleed screw for the hydraulic line. As you can see there's a nipple right there. Um, that's for the 11 millimeter flare nut wrench. Um, that will bleed off the pressure for the uh, suspension hydraulic line. Um, it's right behind the front tire as you can see the brakes are right there. And if you will just look straight up, you'll see that little bleed screw. It kind of looks like a caliper bleed screw for when you're doing brakes. Um, I recommend using the correct wrench, which is a flare nut wrench, so you don't strip that off. If, like I said, if you cannot get that, absolutely. I mean, you can use a uh, an adjustable wrench, but um, make sure that it's new and that the edges are you know nice and sharp and not all rounded off, so you don't strip that by accident. But yeah, you just crack that line open, let it let it drain out until it drips. Um, a, a little bit will come out, not a whole lot. Uh, once it starts dripping and nothing comes out, um, then you can go on ahead and just close it back up. And that is all you'll have to do regarding the hydraulic system. Okay, once it starts dripping pretty slowly, you can just close it back up. And that's all you'll need to do. Make sure you got it on nice and tight. If you had to move the side plastic shield like I had to, 
I'll go ahead and put it back. Okay, so after you've got that line bled, um, you can go on ahead and shut it. And then now what you'll need to do is to, rem is to remove the uh, quick disconnect here. That's, that's this thing here that, that feeds the shock. That's the line you just bled. Um, this is a quick disconnect, this here sleeve. It may be a little stuck, see it spins around. It, it actually pushes down so you can uh, pop it off of this line here. Um, I find it easiest to loosen this here eight millimeter nut. And also there is this, this line you see goes here has this bracket right here holding it on. There's also an eight millimeter right there. So you can go on ahead and loosen both of those. And then you can go on ahead and um, see this one right here, there's supposed to be a rubber ring around this thing and it's not there for some reason. Um, but there is a rubber protective sleeve that goes around this that will be covering this. What you'll need to do is come up underneath it with a flathead screwdriver and just pry it up. It's just rubber, so it should come up easily. You might have to fight it a little bit. But um, yeah, loosen this and loosen this one. And then you'll have, you'll be able to move, maneuver these lines enough to break them free. Um, when you do break this one free, if your kit comes with the if you bought the strutmasters kit that has the light fix module there will be a there'll be small metal metal circular or cylinder like plugs that will go you push it right back into this one so this will come out and then you'll push the plug into this quick disconnect and that'll block that'll block it off if you did not buy the light fix kit when you remove this whole strut, you'll actually have to take this line off of the strut. You'll see it runs up there to the top. You'll actually have to remove that line from this strut and you'll use the, the brass caps on this line itself. Then once you get the brass cap on, you actually need to take this line and reinstall it back onto this piece here. And that will act as the, the cap. So. Um, make sure you pay attention to what kit you got. If you got the light fix, you're going to just cap it off here. If you didn't buy the light fix, you need to cap it on this line from the strut, if that makes sense to you. I'm pretty sure you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, so this is supposed to be a quick disconnect. I promise you, you're going to fight it a little bit. So just take your time. It will come off. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off now. You can have something down here to catch the fluid that's going to come out. Uh, there won't be too much fluid that comes out, but just in case. You see, just pop straight down just like that, right off. I'm going to go ahead and get the plug now. This is the plug that will come with the kit if you bought the light fix. This simply pops straight down into this here. You'll have to pull the sleeve down and stick this in there and that'll cap it off. Just like so. Now that's capped off and ready to go. Um, you can pull, the, pull this upper one off of the bracket, get it completely free, and then what you'll do is Take this one and, and and reinstall the bracket back and put the eight millimeter back on. Okay, after you got the plug in and back and reinstalled into the hydraulic line, you'll move now to the bottom of the shock where it's mounted at here. Uh, there are two five millimeter Allen heads. They're set screws meaning that they're flush in here. And if there happens to be a lot of grease like on this car, you will probably have a hard time finding them, but they are right located in the bottom of the very, the bottom of the shock. So you might have to wipe this off with, if it's dirty like this one is. And then you can go on ahead and uh, remove the two five millimeter set screws that are in here. Remember they're Allen heads. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. You 
see how the shock became really loose. You loosened up the bottom of the housing. So you can go on ahead and remove this set screw all the way out as well. Yeah. Okay, now that you've got that loose, what you want to do, it, in some cases uh, you can push you can push down on the rotor on the whole arm, and then you want to slide this off to the off towards the back of the car, so that way when you're ready to take it out, it'll just slide right out. So right now, this is all you need to do: is just push it down, take it off of this little mounting point, and just push it off to one side. So now what we're going to do is move up to the top of the car so that we can loosen up the mounting bolts up there. Okay, now up here on the top of the car, you'll notice that there's three 13 millimeter mounting bolts, nuts, holding the top of the shock in, and there's also this connector here in the middle. Now, since we're doing the conversion, we will no longer need this connector anymore. That doesn't mean break it off to get it off. That just means that you will have to find some place to hide it. Um, I just took mine and zip tied it down here to this wiring on the bottom. So that way it was out of the way. Um, all you need to do is just pinch this. Um, you can see it has like two little wing nuts. You just pinch this and it'll pull straight up. Don't pull it crooked or anything like that. Just pull it straight up. If you find you can't pinch this to take it off, just use a pair of needle nose pliers to grab around it like so. Pinch it and then just pull straight up with it. Okay, after you got the connector off now, you can go in and just, like I said, set it down to the side and zip tie it up wherever you want because you don't need it anymore. You can go ahead and loosen up these three 13 millimeter nuts. Uh, be careful because remember, the bottom of the shock is not supported anymore. So if you have another helper to help you um, hold the bottom uh, while you loosen these up, then they can go on ahead and you can just pull it straight out from the bottom of the car and then you'll just slide the new shock right back up into its place. Um, if you don't have someone to help you, get a jack on the bottom of the strut and use that to support it while you loosen these up. If you have long enough arms, you can do like I do and just use one hand to hold in here and use the other hand to loosen it up. Once you get it loosened up, go ahead and just remove it. And there you have it, sitting there on the ground. Now, as I mentioned before, if you bought the kit that doesn't have the light fix, the, you will actually need to remove this line. You'll need to remove this line from this shock so that you can use the brass cap on, on the end of this line. And then you'll actually be sticking this back onto the car into the quick disconnect you took it out of. So once again, if you have the light fix, that's it, you're done with this. If you don't have the light fix, you need to pull this line off. Um, you can see it's held on by a a nut here. Um, you'll also need a flare nut for that. But in order to get to that, you need to pull off this top spring here, which there is a special tool you can use that has these two holes. And then you can um, loosen it up, remove this here part that says AMG, and then you can get to that nut easier. Um, I've used a pipe wrench on this before. Just get a pipe wrench and it'll, it'll just go around the whole circumference of this here and then you can break it loose that way. I put this whole thing in a vise and then I used a pipe wrench to loosen this up. But there is a special tool. Uh, you can just Google it to find the special tool. But I'm not here to get into that because this person bought the, the light fix kit so I am pretty much done with that. So now what you need to do is to grab your new 
coilover shock that's going to go in, which is this red one here. And you pretty much just maneuver, maneuver it back into the spot it came out of. Um, and it's pretty s simple. Again, if you don't have someone to help you, use a jack on the bottom of the shock to hold it up while you start the uh, bolts on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, after you've got the top bolts, um, just hand tighten. You just want to hand tighten them. You don't want to tighten them all the way now. Um, now pretty much is just the reverse of uh, the reverse of insulation. You'll want to push down on the the whole arm here so that you can get the new control arm back onto, or excuse me, the new uh, shock back onto the bottom of the shock mount. Um, I, I say don't loose, don't tighten the top because you, you want this to be able to move a little bit so that you can maneuver it how you want to. However, at the same time, I do understand that if you have it hanging too far, it, will, it won't be able to clear the bottom nipple. Um, so just maneuver it back on the best way you can. And then you can go on ahead and tighten up the five millimeter, five millimeter Allen screws and then tighten up the 13 millimeter nuts on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that you've got the lower Allen, you should have gotten the, both the Allens on both sides tightened uh, back into place. Um, you probably had to fight a little bit to get that uh, located onto the tab, but um, nonetheless, you should be able to get it on. Uh, we got the plug right there where it needs to go into the existing hydraulic line. And then if you didn't buy the light fix kit, you'll actually have the the brass cap that's located on the uh, on the longer hose that went up to the shock. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You tighten this up here on the bottom. Then you're going ahead and tighten these three up here on the top. And then the connector, as I said, you can just zip tie that wherever you need it to go. And that's pretty much all you need for the installation. Um, you can go on ahead and reinstall the covers that you took off. You install the big cover first and then you'll install the smaller cover after that and uh, that'll be it. Um, so yeah, I will try and uh, get the wiring, the light harness that comes with it to, uh, to trick the light. I'll try and get a video up for that. But I do have the video for the rear shocks also done as well so be sure to check that one out if you are replacing all four shocks. But this will uh, conclude this video for the front shock. So if this was helpful, helpful to you, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, again, this video will work for the W220 chassis and it'll also work for the, uh, the 2000 through 2006 CL. 65 CL 55s. Um, I forget the chassis codes for that, but this is also a very similar um, process. So, yeah, uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. Thanks.